Hear him bellow, hear him roar, it's Squidgy the dinosaur. Let's draw some hearts for his sunglasses. That's right, he's so cool, he's got heart-shaped sunglasses. They are super electrifying. Drawing the outline of his face now, his jawline and his cheeks. And let's not forget his nostrils and his mouth, of course. Oh, he's a happy one with some teeth. Yes, rawr. Now we're going to draw his tummy. Yeah. Then drawing his hand. A little bit of detail on the palm there. Round his belly. And the other hand. He's got one thumb and three fingers in each hand. And we're going to do some really cool dino talons. Yeah, look at that. Nice big dino feet. Don't forget the tail. And a star, because he's a rock star. So we need lots of stars around Squidgy the dinosaur. Hey, do you have a favorite toy? Or dolly, maybe? Yeah, me too. I used to love my dolly when I was a little girl. Right, ready to paint. Let's start with red. Go vibrant on the heart sunglasses. Yeah, fantastic. Then blue next. Blue around the edge of our hearts to make the red really stand out. And let's go for yellow now. We're going to paint Dino's hands and arms and obviously his body. We're just going to do the outer part of his body for the time being, side to side, staying in between the lines, all the way round. Oh, that tickles. He's very ticklish, you know. It tickles his belly when you paint it. You have to be so careful. <laughs> Let's do his second arm now. Right into his fingers. There. Let's do his head now. Around the sunglasses. Painting his cheeks and his chin. Oh yeah, Squishy the dinosaur. Oh yeah, he can bellow and roar. Rock out! Painting his other cheek and his nose. Going around your oval shaped nostrils very carefully. That's it. Keep in between those lines. Hey, now pink. We're going to do pink nostrils and a pink tummy. Look at that. It really stands out, doesn't it? Bright yellow and a brighter pink. Ooh, I just love it. Yay. Let's do some gold now. Got to have a bit of gold on our tail. Yeah. The dino with the golden tail. Now, how about some silver? Why not silver teeth? And red again for his tongue. That's right, you guessed it. We're going to go peachy pinky for the rest of his mouth. Now for some brown, let's do his feet. Painting around those claws. Painting around those talons. And a darker brown, I think, for those. Yep, we're going to have some nice, strong, dark brown feet. Brilliant, let's paint the stars. Green. Whoa, that looks so cool. Pink. Let's make it match his tummy and nostrils. What next? How about blue to match the rim of the sunglasses? You can choose any colours you like. We love to mix and match. And there you have it. Gorgeous Squishy the Dinosaur. Yeah. Aw, so cute. Hey kids, look, we're underwater and what a beautiful seashell. Come on, let's draw it. A big, round, beautiful pearl. And now the pretty seashell. And some curvy lines. Yes, keep going. And now the top half with curvy lines too. It's very simple. Now let's connect it all together. And 
done! Time to paint in sparkly colours! Red first! Lovely! And now some yellow! Yes! Let's add it around the pearl too! Some purple would be perfect next! Nice and neat! Purple and yellow look great together! I just love purple, it is my favourite colour! And a pop of blue! Lovely! Now for the pearl, let's use some sparkly silver! Amazing! Now some yellow again for the top half! That's it, just keep going along the curves and don't forget to stay within the lines! Perfect! And now a lovely bright green to add that pop of colour! In every other section we'll add green We're nearly done! Let's finish off with a pretty pink! Wow! Look at how the pink and green go so well together! Amazing! Yay! We did great! Isn't this the most beautiful seashell? I hope you had fun! Bye bye! Hey kids, do you like unicorns and cats? Well we're going to show you how to draw a unicorn cat! Starting with the outline, some ears, a bit of fur, nose, the unicorn horn, lovely, inner ears, eyes, some cheeks, a nice cheeky cat face. Now we're going to draw the outline of a cup. So our cute kitty is sitting in a cup. And the paws hanging over the edge there. And the handle. Oh, it's so cute. The base of the cup. And a face of the cup. Smiling, of course. We like a happy cup. Finishing off the last final details. Paws. Patches inner rim of the cup and the smiley cat face don't forget the whiskers and the eyebrows they're ready to paint yeah starting with sparkly pink let's paint the top part of the unicorn horn and a yellow yellow next to the pink yes I think so turquoise turquoise can go next brilliant now for the red let's paint our mouth red and pink can go on the inner ears and the cheeks and the nose oh and the little patches and the paws yeah gorgeous let's go back to yellow again yellow can go on the cup there let's make a gorgeous sparkly yellow cup bright sunny colorful vibrant happy yellow <laughs> don't you just love it what color would you like to paint your cup how about gold? You could even make it multicoloured at the front or put a pattern on it. Anything you like really, be creative. There, now some green. Green's going to go on the inside rim of the cup at the top. And some peach for the cup's mouth. A little bit of purple under the green, I think. Then red for the handle. Wow, this is really starting to look fantastic! What do you think, kids? Do you like it? Let's go back to turquoise, because I love that colour. 
is perfect for a finishing touch. Lovely. There you have it. A gorgeous unicorn cat in a rainbow cup. Hey kids, how are you today? Would you like to draw a caterpillar? Brilliant! Starting with a nice squiggly line. And then all you need to do is draw loads of circles. A big one for the head first of all. Some smaller oval shapes for the eyes, eyebrows, antennae of course. Little baby circles there, a smiley face. And now the body. Some legs. And some small circles inside each of the bigger circles for the body. And we're done, ready to paint. Ooh, what colour should we do first? Yellow, what a great idea. Yellow spots in a yellow bottom. Let's do the face yellow too. Using a small tip paintbrush, carefully painting around the features. Staying in between the black lines. Have you ever seen a real caterpillar in your garden? I love them, don't you? Fantastic, nearly there. Just around the mouth, side to side, small strokes. Up and down, and we're done. Well done. Time for some pink for our mouth. And a red tongue. Yippee! Right, let's paint the body. Let's go for pink first. The first segment can be pink. It matches the mouth, you know. And the antennae, why not? Then green. Wow, what a bright colour that is. It really stands out. Hmm, what colour should we do next? How about red? What a great idea. Do you have a favourite colour? I bet you've never seen a rainbow caterpillar like this one before. Blue net. Lovely. And for the last segment, we can do purple. Brilliant. It's my favourite colour. Excellent. And we're done. Say hello to your gorgeous rainbow caterpillar. Doesn't he look lovely? Hi friends, today we're going to learn how to draw a seahorse. Wow, brilliant. Start by drawing the outline, a curvy line. Coming back around from the bottom to make a tail. Starting on the other side now. Then we're going to do the snout and the long nose and the head. Then we're going to do our fin, a wing-like part of the body. Finishing the border, we can start to do the facial features. So we're doing an eye. And then the scales that go along the back, kind of like a spiky back. Then some curvy lines. Finishing touches, so some lines on the tummy. Then we can do some sea plants around. Since seahorses normally live in sea algae and coral reefs. We're going to just flacken up the border so that way when we colour it in the colours will really stand out. And our sea plants too. We're going to colour the main body of the seahorse in yellow. You can use a colour that you really like if you want. Did you know the seahorses are mainly found in shallow tropical salt water throughout the world? They live in sheltered areas like seagrass, estuaries, coral reefs and mangroves. You can find them in Pacific waters from North to South America. You can also find them in the Bahamas. 
They have been found in European waters too. And even in the Mediterranean Sea. Seahorse gets its name because of its horse-like appearance, its horse-like face and the body being a sea creature. Did you know that it comes from an ancient Greek word, hippocampus? Hippos meaning horse and campos meaning sea monster, since it has a head and neck suggestive of a horse. And it also features a segmented body armour, an upright posture and a curled tail. Now we're painting the spiky back pink. We love that pink against the yellow. What colour would you like to use for your seahorse? Maybe you could do a multi-coloured spine. You could start a new colour at each spiky point. That would be interesting. You could do the same on the tummy. Multi-coloured stripy tummy. We're doing it orange. I think that seahorse is wondering what's going on. Who's that colouring my tummy, he says. Did you know that seahorses range in size from 1.5 to 35.5 centimetres? That's quite a range. I have to say they are very beautiful creatures. Have you ever seen one? A real one? Colour the snout in orange as well. Does shading our lines on the tummy? We like that nice shading effect. Slightly darker orange there. Now time to do the fin, which looks a bit like a wing. Doing that orange to match the tummy. Again, you can choose any colour you like and even split each segment into a different colour. We're using nice thin tipped pens here so that we can carefully shade in between the lines. A bit of a deeper orange on the lines. Gorgeous, look at that. Time to colour in our sea plants. Green, of course. This can be our algae. Doesn't that green colour really make the gorgeous seahorse stand out? It looks lovely next to the orange and yellow and pink. This could be algae or it could be coral, even seaweed. Now we're going to do some blue for the water and some bubbles. It's the finishing touches that make all the difference. And there you have it, seahorse. Hey kids, how are you today? Would you like to draw and paint a sparkly squirrel with me? You would? Brilliant. We'll start by using a black pen to draw the outline. Going to do a foot and the leg, the arm, fingers, tummy. Squirrel's holding a nut, so we draw that too. The other foot, facial features, the eye, nose, and mouth, the other ear, and finally, a big bushy tail. That's right, we've got to have a big bushy tail on a squirrel. Curvy lines. And done! Brilliant! Time to paint. Hmm, let's go with yellow first of all. We're going to paint our squirrel lovely and yellow. Look at that. I do say, Mr. Squirrel, it looks fantastic with your blue eyes. Carefully painting with a small tipped paintbrush in between the black boundary lines. 
painting the main body, so that's the face, the ears, the arms, the back, the legs. And, of course, the feet. You're doing really well, keep going, almost there. Done! Going for gold! The inside of the ear, around the mouth and, of course, the nut. Let's do the tummy the same colour too. Excellent! Going for black this time. We're going to paint the nose. And then brown for the nutshell. Time for a colourful tail, starting with pink for the first segment. Our squirrel has a lovely stripy tail. Yes! What next? How about purple? I love purple. And purple and pink are like brother and sister, you know. They just go so well together. And... Done! Last but not least, we're going for bright green because it's really good to have some contrast, don't you think? Excellent! Well done, kids! You did a great job! Go on, go along and eat that nut. Yummy! Hey kids, would you like to learn how to draw and paint a baby shark? You would? Brilliant! Baby shark! Doo -doo 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 -doo. Just doing the outline first of all with a black pen, the tail and a little flower. Let's do the fins. Excellent! And some eyes. Little cheek. Smiley mouth. Ready to paint. Let's go for blue. Lovely. Royal blue do 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 Royal blue 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 Royal blue do 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 Royal blue Looking fantastic Or should I say fantastic? That's right, then the tail And almost done There! Just this fin And we're going for some light blue now very nice. That is for the mouth area and the tummy. Lovely. This is a great trick to use different shades of the same colour. The top fin as well. Bright yellow for the flower petals. And pink for the rosy cheek and centre of the flower to match. And there you have it. A cute, sparkly blue baby shark. Dee -dee. You did it! Hey kids, would you like to learn how to draw flowers? It is super easy and you can do it all different ways. Look, let's show you. First of all, you draw your centre, which is just a little circle, and then some nice oval shapes to form your petals. And there you go. That was easy, wasn't it? Let's try a different one. This time we're going to do a little cut in the middle of each petal, and they're a bit wider than the last one. There. Now for this flower, we're going to make the petals look like heart shapes. Perfect! This one has long, thin petals, just like a daisy. And we're doing a second layer as well. These petals are shorter and wider, with a lovely detail around the centre. So you can experiment with these different shaped flowers. Use your imagination and think how many different types you could draw. This one has more pointy leaves and two layers. Do you know how many different types of flowers have been found in the world so far? About 400,000! Can you believe that? All of them are different. So have fun with this, be creative and experiment with different sized and shaped petals. OK, I think we're ready to paint. Ooh, let's start with this one. Purple for the centre. Some lovely yellow petals. I have to say, this is one of my favourite colour combinations. Purple and yellow. Absolutely gorgeous, don't you think? 
Maybe you could name your flowers. Make up your own names. Do you know what the ten most popular flowers are? Let's tell you. We've got the rose. You all know roses, don't you? They come in all different colours. But most famous rose is a red rose. And we're going to paint this flower's petals red. Lovely. And I'll mix it up with a different colour in between because that will look very interesting. After roses, the most popular flower is the tulip. They also come in all different colours and they're absolutely gorgeous. Then you've got the sunflower, of course. Have you ever tried to grow a sunflower from a seed? I recommend it. They're amazing. They're yellow, just like these petals. Also very popular and a wonderful sign of the first beginnings of spring is the daffodil. I'm sure you've seen those around. They are gorgeous and they really cheer people up after a hard, cold winter. Then we've got the marigold. Again, they can come in you know, slightly different shades. And here we're doing a lovely red one with a yellow centre. You can also do different shades of the same colour. It looks beautiful. Daisies, of course, are very popular. Have you ever tried to make a daisy chain? A necklace or a bracelet or even an anklet out of daisies, making a little hole in the end of the stem and then just joining them up together to form a band. It's so much fun. The orchid is one of the most beautiful flowers ever that we love to put them in our windows on display. Carnations are also very popular. Gerberas, which come in all different colours, just like this one. And jasmine. Jasmine has the most gorgeous smell. Let's go for yellow for the centre of this one and some purple on the outside. So it's like a backwards version of our first flower, which was yellow petals and purple inside. Let's carefully paint around our detail. There! Lovely. Hmm, let's do this one yellow in the middle. We've got a big centre point in this one and some pink around that. Excellent. What colour do you think we should do our second layer of petals? Should we do it the same or a different colour? Yay, blue! What a great choice! Blue and pink go really well together, don't you think? That's looking lovely. OK, let's do the next one. So we're going to go for gold in the middle. And green around the outside. Beautiful. It's like a little sun shining in the centre of a green field. Almost there. Excellent! Last but not least, let's do our long petalled flower. Green in the middle this time and pink petals. This one does look a bit like a daisy, doesn't it? It's just a different colour. Imagine if we had pink daisies, wouldn't that be wonderful? Flowers are just amazing and you can have loads of fun with this designing your own, even making up your own names. There you go! Now let's see them close up. Oh, look at that. Isn't it beautiful? Wow. Let's see another. Oh, look at that. Those colours are just wonderful. Oh, I'm feeling like summer is here already with all these gorgeous flowers. Flowers really brighten up your day, don't you think? So if you haven't already done so, I recommend you get some seeds and plant them in your garden if you have a garden. And if you don't, it doesn't matter. You can just plant them in some lovely pots. Do be sure to keep them in the sunshine and make sure you water them daily as well because flowers need sunshine and water to grow. You'll be so excited when you see those little green leaves sprouting up from the mud. Now, which one is your favourite? Oh, it's so difficult to decide. I just love them all. Well done. You did a fantastic job drawing and painting these gorgeous glitter flowers. Hey kids, how are you today? Let's draw and colour in a zebra. Starting with the eye and eyebrow. Doing the outline with the ear and the back. Going on to the legs and the hooves. 
That's it, just copy us, the nose, and the mane and the other ear, tail, and the back leg. There you go. Now we start to add our detail and stripes, first on the mane and then on the body. If this video is going too fast for you, you can always pause it or even rewind. You can do your stripes however you like. Long rectangular shapes, simply the stripes or even some long triangles. A bit curvy on the legs. Skipping out the hooves and there you go, we're ready to paint. Black for the stripes and the nose. Even black and nostril. And every other part of the mane is black. And of course, in between those lines that we just drew. Leaving a white gap in between each one. Lovely. Have you ever wondered, is a zebra black with white stripes or white with black stripes? We're going for black on the tip of the tail and also the hooves can be black. Almost there, one more leg to go. And we're done. And there you have it, a cute zebra. Ah, oh, I wanna see one now at the zoo. Hey kids, this video is going to be so much fun! We're going to draw and paint a honeybee, starting with the antennae, then the oval shaped body, and of course the stripes, and the wings. Did you know that a bee's wings are actually so small, technically it shouldn't be able to fly? How amazing! Right, let's paint! starting with black for the antennae and every other stripe. Do you know what a bee's antennae are used for? They're used for communicating. Isn't that amazing that bees communicate with each other? Right, we've gone for yellow next for the face, painting around those eyes. And of course, the remaining stripes will also be yellow. Gorgeous. We painted the sting black already and we're going for the wings. Blue for the wings. If you paint diagonally from side to side, you can paint more surface area faster. Good little tip for you. See, we're not going in straight lines up and down or side to side, we're going diagonally. Almost there, you're doing a great job. Yes, and we are done. That is absolutely beautiful. Rawr, I'm a tiger. Wanna draw and paint me? Yay, let's start with the outline using a black pen. We're doing from the front foot up the leg to the face and the ears, the back and the tail, and then down, let's start the legs from the back, leaving some spaces for the claws on the paws. And now we're adding the claws in. Doing different sized claws to show perspective. Brilliant. Now for some finishing touches. Separating the feet from the leg. The belly. And the facial features. Now we're going to do our tiger stripes three on each side of the face, and then along the back, and the tail. Lots of triangles to make our stripes. Some whiskers, don't forget it's a big cat. Right, ready to paint. Starting with black, we're going to do all of the stripes or triangle shapes, and the nose. Nice and easy. A dab of paint on each. There, going for gold. We're going to do the main body of the tiger gold. Carefully painting in between the stripes, of course, and around the other facial features and the ears. Brilliant, well done. We're just leaving the nose area white, leaving the tummy as well. 
leaving the feet as well. Then the rest of the back. And if you want, you can use pens or crayons or even pencils. It's all up to you. There, ready for some yellow for the inner ears and the nose where the mouth is too and the belly. So it's like a paler shade for those parts. We'll do the feet as well. Not the claws, but the paws. Wow, this tiger is looking really cool. That's it. Right, last but not least, we'll do brown claws. A little dab. One, two, three, and we're done. Excellent. Well done, kids. You did a fantastic job. Rawr. Hey kids, how are you today? Ooh, do you like teddies? Me too! Let's draw! A little tuft of hair in the face. Let's not forget our teddy bear ears and eyes, nose and mouth. Now we're going to draw our teddy bear sitting down. So we're starting with the front legs and paws and then we're going to do one on either side showing the bottom of each paw. Great job! Brilliant! Right, let's darken the border. We love to do this because it makes the colour stand out once you paint it. Right, we're going for pink first of all to do the inner ears. Ah, so cute. And the pads on the paws, because it's a baby bear. Yellow net for the snout, carefully painting around the tongue and the nose. Brilliant. And the tummy. Now we're going for black. We're going to do a black nose. And a red tongue. Mm. Can you stick out your tongue? Right, we're going to do brown for the rest of the bear because it is a baby brown bear. Yes. So using that horizontal stroke, we're going to go from side to side. Carefully around the other features. Great! Now we go for the body. Have you ever seen a real bear? Do you have a teddy bear in your room? Maybe a nice cuddly one? Perhaps it's not brown, perhaps it's some other colour. I have a rainbow teddy. I love it! It's got all the colours of the rainbow. Now what do you name your teddy? Can you think of any good names for this teddy bear? How about Rosie? And there you have it. It is done! Good job kids, you've drawn a teddy bear. Subscribe and watch more! Cheeky Art!